Hi again, and welcome to Dark Horse Garage. My name is Jay. And uh, today we have uh, another project going on where it involves uh, putting together some carrier bearings for the uh, Fortune 944 torque tube. And what we'll be doing today is uh, putting together the, the carrier bearing assembly and let me just explain a little bit what we're going to be doing here. Um, the bearing that the uh, 944 drive shaft uh, is housed in or, or revolves in is uh, a small roller bearing, sealed roller bearing, and it's, it's placed inside this stamped steel carrier. And to replace the bearings, what we had to do is we had to split this carrier apart, remove the old bearing, and now we're ready to replace this carrier with the new bearings. We have our Delrin sleeves that we've machined to a uh, precise fit for the, the drive shaft. And now we're going to place that bearing back in this carrier. Now, let's see if we can get this in here. Pretty snug fit, but um, I'll work with that here in a minute. But what we want to do too is then reassemble the carrier so we have it aligned properly. There are some little indentations and there's some pre-drilled holes. Actually, Porsche used this as a, uh, a means of attaching this back together. They uh, left some material protruding on the opposite sides of these plates and as they protruded through when the bearing was installed, then they just simply peened over the material to lock this together. Uh, we're going to have a little different uh, application of, uh, I guess, trying to fasten these two halves together since a lot of that material is uh, questionable now since we've split them apart. We're going to be using uh, more conventional means with a, a malleable rivet or something made uh, specifically for this type of application. A couple things we're challenged with now is we've got about the right um, size or diameter of the rivet for these these pieces but uh, what we'll need to do is just trim the fit and may be difficult to see here but it, trim the fit so that rivet now will fit inside this groove and to do that we've just got to machine the head a little bit narrower on either side so it will slip into the into this uh, little stamp collar so, let's just go through this uh, and see how this is going to work out. I'm going to take a new bearing, place it in this carrier, which I, again, I did mention is a pretty snug fit. A uh, little hand pressure can get it in there and to properly align these holes so the carrier goes back together correctly. Might need a little bit of help and I do have a let's see I might be able to just tap that in place so uh, maybe a block of wood would be helpful so stand by and get piece of wood to use. Okay, since I really don't want to hit this uh, sheet metal piece directly with the hammer, I'm going to just tap it with a block of wood here. Let's see if this... Okay, that has seemed to have accomplished that. Maybe not quite. Okay, so I'll give you a little better shot at this. These two halves now are joined. The bearing is 
you know, held concentrically within the ring, and also our little Delrin bushing now where our drive shaft will actually ride is in proper position. Now what we have to do is fasten these two together. And as I pointed out a second ago, these uh, rivets need to be sized correctly to fit in this groove. You can see with maybe a little bit of a imagination, that rivet has to be narrowed to fit in that collared groove. So, all right. Um, you know, I think we might attempt to do this uh, a couple of different ways. And for maybe uh, ease of uh, getting this task accomplished, it's, uh, it's really not too much of a concern, um, you know, symmetric uh, or being symmetrical with the rivet uh, head and how it fits in the groove. I might just try to use a side cutter and I might also use a pair of metal shears. So hang on a second. The garage is uh, somewhat cluttered right now. So i got to go out of frame to get this tin snip. We'll see how effective both of these are in trimming the uh, sides of this small rivet. And we're not going to have to re remove very much material. Uh, what I'm going to do is simply just try to... Oh, that's, it's very soft, actually. And what we want to do is make that as parallel as possible. I don't know if you can see that. But let's see if we can reduce that a little bit. So, yeah, what we need is more of a rectangular shape to fit inside the groove. And might be able to reverse this. And you probably can't see that too well, but uh, it's not not the shape we really need. It won't fit in that groove just yet. So, you got to use a little more creativity. Let's see if this shear will get any closer. Uh, again, I'll try to... I call this a shear. It's a snip, I guess. You know, commonly known as a tin snip. But, nonetheless, it is a shear it's by any other name. That happened to get in there a little closer. So we're, we're trying to get uh, a little closer to the shape we need. Maybe I should dress that up with a, a little bit of file. And again, we're going to move around the shop. And let's see what we can do here with this file. Um, file is pretty loaded up right now. I was just busy working on another uh, project that required quite a bit of hand filing. Okay, well, might be able to just drag this over carefully by hand, remove any burr. And let's see what we have. Try this for fit. And that's actually going to fit. That works out pretty well. Don't know if you can see that too easily, but that rivet head now fits within that valley or that recess in that ring. So, 
with that done, we need to do three more of those. And I'm looking now for my one inch mic because I do also want to um, open up these holes and place this rivet inside. Uh, and we'll go on to the rivet process or riveting process. So let me grab my mic and uh, I don't see it handy right now. Uh, it's probably inside on the uh, on the surface plate, and I think that's where it is. So hang on one sec. Let me go grab it. Okay. You know, for once it was right where I thought it was, right by the tool chest. So, and we'll take a look at the diameter of our rivet, and it is decimal 157, and decimal 157 is just slightly larger than 5.30 seconds. So, uh, the fraction 5.30 seconds, we need that drill bit, and then we'll open up these holes and place our rivets inside, and uh, and we'll begin the process of swelling those rivet, uh, rivets to hold those two pieces together. All right, well, I'm going to set some more tooling up and uh, we'll continue from there. Hang on. Okay, well, let's see. We're back on the mill here and uh, setting up to drill our, our 532nd holes for that rivet. And let's see, get set up here. I usually disconnect the power here because uh, when I put the uh, cover over top for the night, um, the cord is somewhat in the way. Turn the power on. And we should be able to plunk through this now and let's see Do we have everything else powered up we really don't so again a little power cord here and we're almost set Now we have our traverse. And we also have down feed set correctly, I think. Let's see what sort of speed we've got. Okay, that little hole, 530 seconds worth, uh, I hope is now the correct size for this rivet. And let me try to place that in there. That is a wee bit tight. Okay, a wee bit. So we're going to have to come up with next size up. Now why, why don't we say uh, 11 64ths. So now on to 5 or 11 64ths. Be right back. Alright, back with our 11 64ths drill bit. Back in our chuck. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's, I 
again try to grab a brush here. <clears throat> brush has a little bit of oil on it but that's really not a bad thing in this application let's see where did our rivet go oh sneaking up on us right over here okay and let's just see if we can get that rivet in there a little tricky could probably use some tweezers to help this out. My goodness, that's going to be probably a home entertainment game. No, well, maybe some needle nose pliers can help us out. <clears throat> Got my set of pliers. Let's see if I can set this back up. Pliers are going to have to go on the long part of the rivet. Look at that. That's what we're after. We're after placing that rivet in the groove, having enough protrude out the other side. With that in place, I'm going to drill my two remaining holes, let's see. those holes drilled that one rivet is is helping us locate and keep that assembly together correctly now I've got to make up two more rivets so you know I'm going to be back in a minute or two I'll make those up and uh, we'll start seeing how we're going to buck those and fasten those together all right well stay tuned Okay, we're back, and uh, we've got to cut a couple more rivets, so let's see if we can get in there pretty close to the shoulder of the rivet. That was pretty good. So that's what we need. The first cut is pretty easy because you don't really have to line up anything. Oops, our rivet just jumped out of our hands onto the floor. And that becomes more fun here. So let's try to get this rivet lined up and cut. Okay, not really bad. Not too bad at all. We just dress up the burr on these. And what I'm doing here is I'm placing the rivet on the file so I'm not really cutting into the diameter of the rivet itself I'm trying to just cut that head properly it takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of work and just drag that even though it's against the teeth of the file it's still soft enough to be able to shape that correctly and also remove that burr so that's what we're after okay I'm gonna grab our uh, bearing holder and our remaining two rivets let's see if we can place these in there 
I'm going to do this on the long side again. That fits nicely. So we've got two rivets in there and that third hole on the bottom is the one I drilled for this last rivet. Let's set that in there. Okay, we've got our rivets in place. We're going to back those up or what's commonly known as bucking and we will do that with a punch and punch in the vise on one side and then we'll come down with a punch on the opposite side and we where these two forces uh, are concentrated that rivet's going to swell in the hole and then uh, the top of that uh, long piece of the rivet is going to mushroom down and effectively hold our pieces together. So I'll move over to the vise with that one and uh, see you in a second. Okay, let's see what we have here. I've got uh, two punches, one mounted in the vise, and the other I'm going to use to peen off the, uh, the rivet. <clears throat> And uh, something that might be a little tricky is now putting those rivets back in. Let's, uh, let's see what we have here. So I'll set that aside, put our first rivet back in. Okay, that first rivet is there. Now what we want to do is place this rivet uh, on this punch without losing it and get that on there as squarely as we possibly can. What I might do is hold that rivet on this side. Line that up. Okay, that does look pretty good. Now the trick is going to be holding this all together and be able to drive this rivet shut. So this may take a little bit of practice here. Bear with me if this one doesn't work out as exactly as we hoped. And our punch has to be narrow too. We might want to change that as well. It hasn't swollen up just yet to lock itself in. Okay, I think really I'm going to have to come up with a better arrangement to, to hold all this together. And if I were going to do this in any large quantity, it would definitely have to be a, a better method. I know it doesn't look pretty, but we've gotten the first uh, rivet started. I'm going to place the other two in place, uh, in position I should say, and that we'll try those too. See if we can get those to form up correctly. Second rivet in place. We're going to grab onto it on the front side. Place it over top of our punch. Located correctly. And now the tricky part for us is holding the second punch over top, directly over top, and then keeping everything together, start to drive that flat. Let's see.
this one is definitely or definitely trickier than the than it looks. So uh, a better method for bucking this rivet arrangement is really needed. But like anything else, anything else you've tried just the first time, there's always room for improvement. And the quest here is really not any, you know, appearance objective. It's, uh, I don't know if I really <laughs> like that. I'm going to have to come up with really a better system for these, uh, these rivets. This is more of a trial and error and not really happy with being able to line up the two punches since they're so small diameter. Pretty hard to keep those by hand. Uh, in position correctly. But so far uh, I think the rivets are going to work out to keep the two halves together. It's uh, just difficult getting these rivets bucked up or compressed correctly. I don't know if that's the correct term. Riveting subject though, I'm sure. Okay, that one's uh, got a bit wonky, as the Brits would say. So, um, have to come up with a better system. I think, I think what I'm going to do. Not real happy with that. Although it is together, it looks pretty unsightly. I think I'm going to machine a ring, a steel ring, to fit inside this sleeve to hold the rivets in place. Then I can place it on a flat surface and concentrate on just a nice gentle uh, peening action on the rivet itself and not trying to line up the two punches. So I'm going to, I'm going to come up with something uh, that will set inside this, this slot or groove here and see if we can accomplish a little better effect here or result because some of those uh, some of that painting looks really pretty bad probably will stay together but again not, not gonna work off of uh, probability we're gonna try to do a, a better job with that alright well uh, we'll be back at it in a little bit stay tuned okay what I've decided to do is uh, I've got this uh, brake piston and the diameter of the brake piston is going to be just about the size we need for our rivet operation so we can buck that rivet and uh, hold them securely while we're um, trying to pin them over to lock those two halves of the, the bearing holder together so let's put them put them in the vise or in the jaw of our lathe okay and uh, we should be powered up let's see what we have here Okay, looks like it's running pretty true and so what I want to do is I want to cut off this lip and in doing so we're going to be able to slip our bearing on there let's see I'm going to use the uh, caliper here to figure what size we're going to wind up with I'll zero us out and this is kind of a estimator at best sometimes don't always like the digital more of a dial type so two inch uh, 215 thousandths and we are two 
two inch 749 thousandths. So um, we, can, we can take this lip down and it doesn't have to be too precise. We just want to actually just fit this uh, bearing sleeve or bearing assembly onto that where we can hold these rivets in place to give us uh, you know some sub substance to be able to, to buck that rivet. So let's let's give this a try here see what we wind up with. And let's put our cutter in place. We really don't need our indicator right now. Again, I mentioned that this is more of a, a bi eye type of deal, low precision. So let's see what we have. Oops, I might have. Let's see if our speed is going to be good too. <laughs> 